apologize for being a few minutes late. Uh, we had the uh, executive meeting for this. So. Uh, at this time, uh, let's stand and pledge and hold the silence. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we're going to start the meeting uh, with some recognitions. Uh, Adam, uh, Fulton County Lily Scholarship finalists. You can fill us in. Oh yeah, Rochester High School was uh, one of the three uh, Lily finalists this year. Uh, children here with us tonight. Uh, Covenant Lingenfelder, Riley Piper, and Zach Boys. Um, so that's just a real honor uh, for them and their family. That's a lot of hard work and going above and beyond what you expect from a normal student to be to the point where you can receive them like that. So we're very proud of them and hope for the best for all of them. It was such an honor. We got to sit down with them and go through a mock interview process, and I got to really know um, different sides of the students during that process, and it was just fun. So I appreciate um, your hard work and making it to that point, but allowing us the opportunity to sit down with you and speak with you and learn more about you. Would they stand? So, are they here tonight? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to share when you'll know information or where you are in that process? Had the final interviews or not yet? Oh, to me? Either one of you. Yeah, we, we had our interviews already at the end of January, and then they said they'll let us know sometime around the end of March who the recipient was. So they do leave around yeah. spring break. Yeah. It's right. the waiting that's the hardest part. Yeah. 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 Well, that's great. Thank you. Okay, we have the IU Foreign Language Honors Program Award. Uh, Alex, could you fill us in on that? For the past few years, I've, I've uh, encouraged students, various students, to participate in the IU Honors uh, Program in Foreign Language. And what it is, is it's an experience where between their junior and senior year, or between their third and fourth year, they actually go and live in country. Uh, there's quite a long list of really, really high alumni, I have, in my mind's eye, that, that have done this. And we have two uh, young ladies that made it into the program this year as well. Uh, we have Nikki and uh, Tori that made it in and as with all of the others I'm, I'm exceptionally proud of them they're excellent excellent young ladies thank you guys can you share with us where you're going to study abroad um I'm going to a town of about 130,000 in Spain in northwestern Spain um, a city called Leon and I'll be there for seven weeks starting in early June and ending late July mm -hmm. And your mom's willing to let you go? <laughs> <laughs> so far. <laughs> Dad, I know. Mom? So far. Mom's fine with it. <laughs> I don't know about that. Um, I'm going to Merida, Mexico. It's uh, the little province on like this. It sticks out on the side of Mexico. <laughs> it's labeled um, La Ciudad de Paz, which means the city of peace. So it's a very safe country, and I am so excited. I leave about the 7th of June, and I come back July 24th. Thank you. That is awesome. Thank you. Lots of pictures to share. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, VFW Award, uh, Chris. We were um, very blessed this year to uh, have three of our eighth graders uh, have gotten first, second, and third in the Patriot uh, pin contest. But not only did we have students win the uh, VFW Patriot pin contest, we had two teachers uh, received the VFW Teacher of the Year Award and then um, uh, one teacher was runner-up. 
Uh, Cassie Murphy was a runner-up this year. She's uh, unable to be here tonight. I think she had a conflict with one of her daughters getting her to a class or something. But um, Cassie was nominated because she just really has embraced technology at our middle school with the one-to-one, -one, um, trying to implement a flipped classroom type of instruction. And what that is, is where students will watch videos when they're at home and then do a lot of the work in class where she can offer individual attention and uh, address individual problems at that time. Um, Cassie has also volunteered um, a day or two a week to stay after school with students who are having difficulty uh, retaking quizzes, uh, retaking tests, and, and offering some homework help uh, as well. In addition, she's uh, volunteering to be our Honor Society uh, co-sponsor with Trisha, Trisha Setterholm and uh, they have just been working their tails off trying to get our Washington DC trip for our Honor Society going and, and making sure everybody who wants to go can um, with uh, fundraising activities and, and such so she's just gone above and beyond in terms of um, what I would expect from a great teacher she's just phenomenal with her commitment to Rochester Middle School. So she was uh, the runner-up, and then we got BFW Teacher of the Year here, Miss Chris Cox. And Chris um, was nominated because she, her, her passion towards social studies is really contagious. Um, she really tries to get kids to love social studies and um, <clears throat> comes up with innovative uh, projects in her class. Uh, Chris has also um, been just phenomenal with our intersection program, um, teaching math and, and incorporating social studies. She works well with the language arts teachers, trying to help her cover her standards. And she's just done a wonderful job with our enrichment field trips, taking kids to Wolf Park, Chicago Museums, uh, South Bend Studebaker Mansion. And, uh, her and I were just talking about well what are we doing this spring and we have she has a, a couple great ideas on that as well so that's why she um, was nominated and received the FW teacher of the year thank you Chris you like to say anything um, well I'd love to take those trips and I love to take kids places where they've never been. So going anywhere and your support with that has been so helpful. When we leave to go to Chicago, I take, when I've taken those two trips to Chicago, those kids have never seen anything outside of Rochester many times. And they say, are, are we, we're in Chicago and it looks just like our, like we dreamed or just like we thought New York City would look. Like their eyes are this big the whole time and it's just such a blessing. So, you know, every time we try to think of something different or unique, and as, as hard as it is to get motivated and to do it every time, you just gotta do it because they love it so much. So, I'm still out there. Anybody has any other ideas, we'll be willing. I think I've got two days figured out. So, we're, we're kind of bumping it up. We're gonna do something a little different this time. Thank you for your hard work on it. There's a lot of behind the scenes work that goes with calling and making those reservations and getting those tickets and, and, and building that itinerary. So thank you for your commitment on that, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Congratulations. <coughs> okay. Well, as always, uh, we appreciate the ones that come in uh, to be honored and we know you don't have to sit here through the whole meeting if you don't want to. So we're not offended if you want to leave at this time. So we always say Well then with our audience. It's always great to hear the good things going on in the school and the community and the individuals that put the extra effort in. It's nice to be an honor. Okay, next uh, we're going to move on to consent items. We have the minutes of the February 4th 
study session, minutes of January 19th regular meeting, and the minutes of the uh, January 19th Board of Finance meeting. Were there any additions or corrections to the minutes? Um, Tom, for the study session on February 4th, uh, we also had a report from Ryan Helms. I know. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case somebody asked us later, he was there. Yes, I have it written down. <laughs> Okay, so make the addition of uh, Ryan Hill at that. Any other additions or corrections? I need a motion to accept the uh, minutes as presented with the addition of Ryan Hill to the uh, study session. So moved. I'll second. Okay, Brad. And Lisa, second. Any other discussion? All in favor, right hand, please. Okay, motion carries 7 0. Sherry, financial report. Okay. So, our financial report, some things I wanted to um, point out is um, we received our first um, fees, taxes attached to the Patient Protective Act, which everybody knows as Obamacare and it was just under $23,000. We pay $63 per participant in our insurance, and that will continue for four more years. So, so how does that exactly work? We have to pay no matter what we do with our insurance. We Correct, have to pay. that everybody that has insurance has to pay. Still have to pay. Yes, and did you tell me, Sherry, we're gonna have to pay again then in July? We chose, so ch I looked through our paperwork and you guys chose to pay it at one time. Okay, so, so we are done for the year. So it's, it's, um, it's just something that we all have to pay to offset the individual market that's out there to fund that. So our plan is not approved by Obamacare? No, no, this is, Obamacare is a 1,100 pages long. Yeah. <laughs> and a person back in Hebron, Indiana has read it three times. And more or less said and done, if that gets all the way implemented through all the years, you're about at 40, 42% in t new taxes and stuff that everybody will pay. So this is just a fee to fund it. So anybody that corporation, self-insured, non in, you know, insured through the traditional way of another company has to pay this. There's no way out of it, it's just in the law. So it has nothing to do how you handle your insurance, how you don't handle your insurance. This is this is in that that law that we have to pay. And part of what MJ does is continues to keep us in compliance with all of those laws. So when Brad asks if we're in compliance, we are, and MJ helps with that, right. and we meet with them quarterly to make sure that we're doing everything to keep us in compliance, but this is just one of those Gosh, unforeseen... Sure compliance. <laughs> well, I want to explain MJ who they are and what they do for us. MJ, MJ is an insurance um, consultant. He's an insurance consultant that helps to make sure you stay in compliance, helps you set your rates, and... Goes on and seeks the best, right. the best um, insurers for our district. They've been wonderful to work mm -hmm. with. So that is one thing I want to bring to your attention that um, we have paid in January. The other thing is um, our health insurance claims we usually expect because we went to the high deductible. People have to meet their deductible in the first mm -hmm. year for our premiums to be lower. Just wanted to point out our first two weeks of February, the first week, our claims were $100,261.63. Second week of February, we're at $5,462.03. Um, we do have um, some individuals and stuff going through some tough times, and which will be high, high claims for us. So when we're self-insured, just within our own corporation, so we don't belong, like it's not, we're not sharing that with other corporations, is that correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. correct. Jenny, we're, <clears throat> we're self-insured up to a stop-loss point. Mm -hmm. So if we have multiple uh, cat catastrophic illnesses, mm -hmm. we do have insurance overlying the self-insurance. And uh, so you know, we've got several million dollars at, at risk, but we don't have the whole corporation at risk. Gotcha. And thank you, and with that stop-loss, and that's how we budget monthly what we need to put back into that fund. So if we do hit maximum stop-loss, we have the funds set aside for that. <clears throat> Um, you'll see that on your agenda claims, um, I've had Linda put the first uh, claim number, 6268, and there are totals, 
totaling $661,210.86. You guys have a better picture of what that is. That's claims that have been paid from January 20th to, to the, tonight's date. That's what that covers. And then also there's, um, you guys saw in your reports how the payroll's listed, so you can see that more entailed. Um, so we've had three pays in between those board minutes, and they're um, $1,087,196.43. So you kind of can see it more broken out. Um, you had your fund reports that I sent. I also looked, like on your general fund, our ending cash is um, 860, I mean $1,000,000. 9,143.72 and last year at the same time we were at $976,659.45 you guys wanted to start saving some money in the general fund so I wanted to show that we are we are um, doing that our transportation um, is last year was 698,376.05 and we have 829,196.18 dollars and 18 cents so we're doing pretty good on on that. You guys have any questions? So we're up a million in the general fund over last year this time? Uh, no. We have about uh, just under a hundred thousand more. Oh. Just be eight. Probably went from nine seventy six. Well, let's round up. Nine hundred seventy seven thousand to a million nine. We wish we were. I thought she said one point nine, I think. Hey, all right. <laughs> That's what it is right now. That's <laughs> compared to last year. Yeah. It's just up a bit. Yeah. But where where we should be at this point. Yes. We did what we will probably see our general fund go down a little bit because our February count came in and we're down like about 36 students. So they'll, we'll change that up on us here a little bit. <coughs> Any other questions on the claims? Claims? I need a motion to approve the uh, claims. So moved. Okay, motion by Sandy. A second? I'll second. Second by Jenny. Any other questions? All in favor, right hand, please. Okay, most of carried 7 0. Okay, we have the allowance at the end of the year transfers. That is, it's zero because what that does is it is um, the term they use is shake it out. You can't have anything um, negative when you go in, so you have like okay. 700 accounts in your general fund, and if there's Five hundred dollars in this one, and this one is negative five hundred. It just flip flops them. So when you send that into um, the state, everything's showing positive, nothing negative. Okay, I think we will need a motion to approve that. Moment. Okay. <coughs> this this one here. Our report is to transfer of funds between the. Yes, we gave them a okay. report and then they'll sign it. They did a resolution like two boards back saying right. that was fine to do that. And this is just your report that you right. you accomplished it, so right. you, you don't need it. So we just sign on the claim for the. Yeah. 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 Well, yes. Okay. Good. Hey, student stakeholder. Okay. Student stakeholder focus. Uh, we've got donations. Rochester Middle School Student Needs Optimus Club, $400. <coughs> A senior Parent Breakfast, Fulton County REMC of $500. Rochester High School National Honor Society, <coughs> Credit Union, $50. Uh, the RMS PBIS Reward Store, RMS staff members, uh, various donations. RMS student needs anonymous clothing and all schools reading counts I owe I $50 each are there any others any questions 
Motion to approve the donations. I'll move to accept the donations as listed. Okay. Motion by Lisa. I second that. And a second by Steve. Any other questions? All in favor, right hand, please. Motion carries 7 0. And I would just say thank you again to all of those donors. Our community is so generous and it keeps, continues to help us keep those programs going. So thank you. And all these, they all add up. They I do. Mean, over the year, I mean, it adds up to a lot. And each group has helped immensely. Information analysis, North Central Indiana Special Education Cooperative uh, 2015 Joint Agreement. Loretta, I know that you spoke at the study session. Do you, could you kindly just, for the public, um, just kind of recap what that agreement is and what that entails for us, please? Yes. This is an agreement with six districts in the form of North Central Indiana Special Ed Cooperative. And this hasn't been looked at in detail since 2003. And so a lot was put into it this time, make sure that it's legally sound and that it really um, explains how we all work together in a cooperative for our special ed students. And the two major changes were location and then the withdrawal process, if you want to highlight those. If, yes, we didn't have anything in there if you wanted to withdraw from the cooperative. And so that's spelled out. This was the document that was shared at the study session as well. Okay. Okay, any motion to approve the resolution? I make a motion to approve this resolution. Okay, motion by Don. I'll second. Second by Lisa. And this questions or discussion? We should have. Okay. All favor, right hand, please. Motion carries 7 0. Thank you, Laura. Yeah, thank you for all that work. <laughs> making it easy for us to understand. And I think that. one day, weren't you doing it through conference calls <coughs> on our snow days when you couldn't make it in, so everybody was doing conference calls from yes. all the districts and putting in the time on the snow day. <coughs> okay. Uh, faculty and uh, staff focus, the certified classified bereavement leave. Uh, we talked about that and had a first reading at the last meeting. Uh, We'll identify today as a second reading and possibly we can make it a third yeah. reading and can pass. Yeah, I'll put a motion to uh, uh, move it directly to third reading, adopt it unanimously, then you can uh, go to third reading and then take a motion on the adoption of the new policy. Okay. I make a motion that this be also the third reading. Second. Okay. Motion by Don, second by Brad. All favor, right hand. Pass 72. Now motion to approve on the third reading. I make that motion. Okay, motion by Brad. Second. Second, Sandy. Okay. And Jenny, Sandy. you want to touch base on how you're bringing the two policies? We are. We, um, there was um, classified and certified staff, the bereavement policy allowed for different days um, depending upon family members and what we wanted to do was align what those families look like what what the families look like for our certified teacher should be the same outline for the classified teacher so we were bringing those family dynamics into alignment with the days off in an effort to in a good faith effort to be honest this did hit our office um, just this last payroll and so we did honor that under the new um, the new policy anticipating that that was the direction that we were going to go and that was fair to that um, classified person. I think it was a case that wasn't intentionally done that way to begin with. It was just kind of overlooked and somebody brought it to our attention and that's why we review policies and go over them and, and want to be fair. So we have a motion and a second. Uh, any other questions? All in favor? Right in. Okay, motion carried 7-0. Okay. Personnel report. Uh, let's start with maternity leave. Jenny Ballman, middle school special needs teacher, March 17th through the end of the school year. And Jennifer Zartman, Spanish teacher, April 6th, 2015 through the 29th of May, 2015. Uh, under hirings, we have Amber Kale, Columbia special needs instructional assistant. Tara Smoker, 
Columbia Special Needs Instructional Assistant. Colleen Kitson Perrin, if I pronounce that correctly. Temporary Spanish teacher on a maternity leave. And Steve Lynn, temporary Rochester High School math teacher, maternity leave. I uh, made a motion to uh, accept the uh, maternity leave and hirings. I'll move to accept. Okay, motion by Lisa. I'll second. Second by Sandy. Any other questions? Um, it, the maternity leaves, the way it's listed, they're kind of the same but different. If we have to make up days in June, I don't know if this even matters for us or not, but as it's written, would that mean that Mrs. Artman would need to come back? Oh, or he's doing yes. I'll get with her on that. You're correct. She is uh, planning on, she She's wants planning to come to. back for finalization. Oh, she does. Okay. okay. Thank you, Adam. <laughs> okay. Good question. Okay. All, uh, all in favor? <coughs> okay. Most scared to 7 zero. Okay, we have a termination. Uh, Justin Bach, eighth grade boys basketball coach. Any uh, questions or discussion? Any question or discussion from the audience? Okay, I need a motion. I move that we terminate Justin Bach as eighth grade boys basketball coach. Okay, that motion. I have a second. I second that. Okay. Any other question? All in favor, right hand, please. Motion carries seven zero. Okay, under other business, uh, project update. I'm going to hand out to you um, the recent bid proposal we did. We are working with Duke Energy. We need to work with them to set up the new transformer and find a location for that. I want to commend Adam Strasser and, and his ability to work with the teachers and relocate that. We had set aside around $150,000 for that. Duke is absorbing most of the costs with the new transformers, but it is our responsibility to get that brought into the building, and so that's what we're covering. We had anticipated $150,000. We have three bids. Um, Terry Thornsberry believes all of these bids to be good bids um, and so I would like for you to look over those. The alternative for aluminum as you see listed underneath the bids would be a reduction in the price should we so choose to use aluminum. However with those bids coming in well under what we had anticipated I would propose that we move forward using the copper that was in the base bid price and knowing that, that we are still well below those bids. But I am bringing this to you, asking for um, you to discuss and, and make a motion tonight so that we can begin moving with Duke Energy to, to draw out those plans and make sure we get that up and going as quickly as we can for them and for us. Okay, have any questions on the bids? Haven't we had Herman and Getz before? We have, and Terry felt like they did a really nice job for Rochester <coughs> that that um, he was eager to go ahead and work with them again. They, they came in as a little better and he, he was anxious to work with them again. He thought they did a really nice job. We had, I thought we had worked with them sure. before. Did uh, Terry uh, give us kind of pros and cons on the, the copper, aluminum, uh, I'm sure longevity, copper would be better. He, he had said originally that aluminum um, is, is a viable alternative, that they felt like they had organized a lot of the things that originally were at fault with aluminum and, and electricity. It does come down to exactly what you're talking about. The copper seems to be a better um, conduit of that and, and does last longer. And Duke, I think, they were most certainly willing to work with either, but I think the comfort level with the copper is there for both sides. Now that we know that it's well under what we can had anticipated. We had budgeted 150000 We had budgeted 150000 for this part of the project. Well, that's good news. Yeah. And part of that, quite honestly, part of that is due to Adam and, and working with us and, and with his teachers to find a different location that, that would save the district money while keeping programming viable, while keeping a maintenance area for our gentlemen free and clear so that they could continue to use that. So. Some, some of that credit needs to go to Adam and his team as well for working with us to make those changes. 
Thank you, Adam. Janet, do you have a recommendation of the three bids? I would recommend Herman and Goats. Their base bid is $86,788, and I would recommend that we move forward with the copper. Okay. And that is the lowest bid there, I'm looking at, right? Correct. And they were forced before that bid, right? Yes. I guess I could read the, uh, the bids. Uh, Herman gets uh, base bids 86788 uh, Martell Electric base bid $99,999. And Schwartz Electric, $93,440. So I uh, entertain a motion to uh, accept uh, Herman Getz, or it's your, your call. So moved. Okay. No seconds. Okay, a motion by Brad, second by Lisa. Any other discussion? I'll favor right hand, please. Okay, a motion carried to 7 0. And then lastly, what I'm handing out to you is P9. We may have to make an extra copy of the lot here. This is just an agreement in good faith to share with you the information. It is time for us to renew um, an engagement letter with UMBA, who helps us track all of our bond projects. We're working very closely with them, and I know that we've had a lot of conversations lately around those bond projects. So um, our um, engagement with them is listed as $3,300. And I'm just in good faith sharing with you that we'll be moving. I anticipate signing that and moving forward with UMBAL to continue to help us monitor our bonds and, and payments. And they have been wonderful to work with and responsive to our questions. And I think Sherry gets good information out of them as well. So it's just a copy of, of that engagement letter. <coughs> I think okay. and that's it for construction. Okay, any other business? Adam, do you mind sharing the district-wide plan in regards to convocation and the community sure. and an outreach program that we're gonna try to pull together? Uh, we're doing a district-wide body safety program, um, March 17th through the 19th. That's going to be presented by uh, Sergeant Terry Hall of the Indiana State Police. Uh, IMPD. Um, what is it? Indianapolis Metropolitan oh, Police Department retiree, IMPD. I believe. And uh, he's going to come to each building. There's going to be a parent night on the uh, 17th here at the Learning Center at 5.30. Uh, then on the 18th, there'll be at Columbia in the morning and the middle school in the afternoon. Then on the 19th, there'll be at Riddle in the morning and the high school in the afternoon. Um, basically, this is a program uh, to empower children that if they've had a bad experience. It used to be called the Bad Touch Program. Um, now they call it Body Safety. But um, we worked with the uh, DCS, we, we had a district meeting with the leaders of DCS, and they really recommended this. Um, so it's just a, a way for us to give this information to our students, hopefully make it a safer community for our students. A lot, he's been all over the state, and a lot of communities have found a powerful uh, result from this presentation. And I think what interests me most as well is that those topics are differentiated for the level mm -hmm. of of students when you're talking high school students they're going to talk some about internet safety um, snapchatting those types of things sexting and then as you get into the lower grades it's a more appropriate conversation for each grade level so we're going to try to work with the community and work with DCS to pull that out. do you have questions for Adam and the team sounds good Adam thank you um, Kathy Wilkinson and I are working with Woodlawn Hospital. They contacted us. Woodlawn anticipates um, needing to revamp their kitchen in the month of June. So we are working with them to open up one of our kitchens here within the district to help support the community in that endeavor. Um, we are trying to gather some cost, some numbers for them and how that might work, how that might look with our current uh, food service staff to make that possible. So we're doing the best that we can to accommodate Woodlawn and and be able to um, get that going for them in June. The one thing that we have to be diligent about is we also have the summer parks program where we're feeding some of those kids with the summer foods program. So we're gonna make sure that we can run both and do that well for everybody. And then I would just remind the board that we need a response as to whether or not you would like to attend the Spring Academy for ISBA. It begins on Thursday, April 9th, and it concludes Friday, April 10th in the afternoon. 
So if that's something you're interested in attending, please let Linda or myself know so that we can register the team and get down there. Looks like a fantastic agenda. That's ND. It is an ND. It starts Thursday, April 9th at 8 a.m. is registration, and it concludes Friday at 1.15. That's it. That's it. I believe so. Any other uh, comments from the board? Public? I just wanted to speak real be briefly regarding the lockdown we had recently that I'm sure everybody is well aware of. Um, I thought it went extremely well in a tense situation. To the best of my knowledge, that's the first real lockdown we've had that has not been a drill. And I also wanted to thank. Um, just the information I received as an employee and I felt like maybe I didn't always know everything, but I knew what I needed to know. Um, I know there's things to work on still, but it was a learning experience. And I also want to express my gratitude to the state police who showed up very quickly and the local police who showed up very quickly and their response. And I felt very safe through the whole thing, even though it was a tense situation. So I just felt that needed to be said. Thank you. It's good to hear. As a, as a grandparent, I have to say that my two that are in the middle school and the high school seem to be totally oblivious to anything happening because I ask all of them, you know, what happened? At, the, at, at Riddle and Columbia, I thought it was handled beautifully. There was no tension. They were not the least bit afraid any time during the day. And I think the community just handled the whole thing in a wonderful, wonderful way. We can sit here and think about Lambert McKinney that also gives the administrators, <coughs> teachers, and staff for doing and following the policy. It makes it that much simpler. So, likewise, right back at you. It's yeah, a good place to live. <laughs> it is. We did okay. We did all right. Well done, Tana. Thank especially. you. No, and I thought our discussion afterwards was good Absolutely. too. And and we have a meeting, a follow-up meeting on Thursday with all of those entities to try to rectify some of those things that we could improve upon. I mean, it's terrible. Something like that happens, but it forced us to basically practice a real-time scenario. And if there had to be a thing we had to do, that was a good way. It was. Yeah. It was the best possible worst case. Uh, it's still a scary situation that uh, was handled very well. I appreciate everyone involved. Any other uh, comments or questions? Can I say something? Sure. Um, I like to regard the situation we both coach stress and Bob. Um, in my personal opinion he was the best coach that we've ever had um, he had brought us to our season at 10 and 4 I think and his regardment uh, through in the locker room I think was not right and either way and how that was handled um, I just like to say that he was I thought of him as the best coach and as as our team went into talk to Mr. Hawes and we had had our discussion to him and we just like to say that he would just the best coach and I think that he should have another chance of doing what he loves to do is to coach basketball. Thank you. Um, when we went into Haas's office the day before, the Thursday before we were supposed to have the game, we all got a group message and we were deciding we were, if we were or weren't going to play, we weren't going to play the game without coach. And then our captains came back on the next day of the group message and one of our captains, Brady Perez, said, guys, I just think we should play the game. So we went and played the game. And But every time we were in the huddle, instead of saying team or zebra, we did we said co for Coach Bach because he brought us that far, we wanted him to be with us, and we just hope he is able to coach the seventh graders and moving up to eighth grade next year. Thank you. Thank you, John. Yeah. I know how difficult public speaking is, so thank you for doing that. Yeah, that, that meant a lot for you to come in and uh, speak on the coach's behalf, and uh, appreciate you doing that. Any other questions? Comments? If not, we'll stand adjourned. Thank you for coming. <laughs>